Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Dr. Himanshu Sharma, from Duplex's Medical Communication Team, welcome you all to this new session of Dentisenship. Today we will be talking about conservative and aesthetic treatment modalities for the management of discolored teeth. Tooth discoloration falls into three categories, extrinsic, intrinsic, and age-related. The treatment modalities for the aesthetic correction of decolored teeth includes bleaching, microabrasion, veneers, resin infiltration, and full crowns. To give an overview of the treatment modalities, we have with us Dr. Poonam Joshi, an expert endodontist. Dr. Poonam Joshi is presently working as an assistant professor and fellowship mentor, contemporary endodontist at Dr. D.Y. Patil Dental College and Hospital, Pimpri Pune. As an endodontist, she specializes in routine clinical as well as complex endodontic procedures. During her tenure as a postgraduate resident, she has treated more than 600 clinical cases and can efficiently handle any kind of mishappenings during the treatment, which includes transportation, perforation, retreatment, and separated instrumental retrievals. She routinely speaks at various national conferences and has been awarded with the Emerging Speaker Award at the 61st Maharashtra State Dental Conference, Amravati, in the year 2022. I welcome you, Dr. Poonam Joshi. You may now please present your presentation. A very good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Poonam Joshi, a restorative dentist and an endodontist, currently working as an assistant professor and fellowship mentor at Dr. Deva Patil Dental College and Hospital, Pengri Pune. I am an academician and I am pursuing my PhD in endodontic biofilms as well as a clinician having a private practice of more than 13 years in Pune. My areas of special interest are primarily focused on management of discolored teeth, vital pipe therapy, regenerative endodontics, and endodontic biofilms. Today, I would like to share with you on the various conservative and aesthetic treatment modalities for the management of discolored teeth. I would cover my topic under the following lights. A single discolored tooth is a commonly encountered clinical problem in general dental practice. We have a wide range of treatment options which exist and we can consider adopting the minimally invasive technique in the first instance before we move towards the more invasive therapies according to the clinical scenario. Now the aim of my presentation is to highlight the various minimally invasive options that we have for the management of discolored teeth especially a single discolored anterior tooth. Now, before we start with the management or the uh, treatment options, let us understand about the types of discoloration and the mechanism of discoloration. So discoloration can be broadly categorized into intrinsic discoloration and extrinsic discoloration. The intrinsic discoloration results from a change in the normal structural composition or the thickness of dental tissues that can be due to dental caries, pulpal necrosis, intrapulpal hemorrhage, tooth resorption, aging, endodontic materials, enamel hypoplasia, tetracyclin staining, etc. Whereas the extrinsic staining or the extrinsic discoloration could be due to chromogens that are derived from diet like coffee, tobacco, red wine, or from deposits on the surface in the pelican layer. Okay. Now let us understand the mechanism of discoloration. So discoloration is primarily based on the chromophore theory. Chromophores or the stain molecules are the molecules which are held together by a carbon-carbon double bond. Now, these stain molecules can easily penetrate through the interprismatic spaces that are present on the surface of the enamel. These carbon-carbon double bonded stain molecules absorb more amount of light because of which the tooth appears dark or yellow. 
This is how the tooth seems to be discolored when we clinically view it in a patient's oral cavity. Now, how can this discoloration be prevented? So the preventive measures can be patient dietary education, oral hygiene measures, or proper brushing, brushing techniques and crossing techniques that can be explained to the patient, smoking cessation in case of chronic smokers, and topical fluoride treatments. Now the literature has described the various minimally invasive treatment modalities for discolored teeth management and it is called as a progressive approach concept or the crescendo of treatment options for management of discolored teeth. A correct diagnosis should be made from a combination of careful case history, patient assessment and special tests before we opt for any particular option. So the available options that we have are total eight options, which are which can be seen on the screen as of now, ranging from the minimally invasive to the maximum invasive treatment mod modalities. Now, sometimes it is not possible to stick to any one of the options, but a combination of the options that are seen on the screen can be used for the management of this color. Now, let us talk about each of these options at depth, starting with the first one that is monitor and review. So this particular option can be useful, especially in recently traumatized teeth. Any patient who reports to a dental clinic with a history of recent trauma can have a pinkish discoloration in the tooth, which can be evident within two to three days of trauma. So such cases have to be regularly monitored for a two to three months period wherein the bottom discolor itself can be regularly monitored. If at all, it is increasing or it is resolving. In case if we find that the discoloration has resolved, then we need not carry out any invasive treatment, but just keep the patients, uh, keep that particular patient on a regular follow-up. In case if the discoloration is increasing, then we can opt to the further invasive modalities. Coming to option number two, scaling and polishing. So it is regularly done as an oral prophylaxis routinely in patients who come with extrinsic stains. Other option that can be used is air polishing. So air polishing is done. Uh, air polishing can be done in uh, is done in heavy smokers, wherein calcium carbonate, aluminum trihydrate, or sodium bicarbonate is expelled through a mixing nozzle with air and water in a controlled jet to get rid of the extrinsic stains against the tooth and eye. Coming to option number three, that is bleaching. Now bleaching is an upcoming trend and is regularly done in patients for aesthetic rehabilitation, especially in the upper anteriors. Now these, uh, this bleaching procedure can be broadly classified into vital bleaching and non-vital bleaching depending on the pulpal status of the tooth. Now before we understand what is vital and non-vital bleaching, let us understand the mechanism of bleaching. So as we all know that chromophores which are responsible for the staining in the tooth are held together by carbon-carbon bonds, double bonds. Now the bleaching agent that we use is responsible for breaking this carbon-carbon double bonds into carbon-carbon single bond, which reflects light and the tooth appears whiter. So the bleaching process is nothing but a redox reaction wherein the bleaching agent is introduced through the interprismatic spaces in the enamel that diffuses through the interprismatic spaces, interacts with the carbon-carbon double bond that are present in the chromophores or the stain molecules and breaks them into smaller molecules of carbon-carbon single bond which reflects light due to which the tooth appears whiter. So to summarize, bleaching is a redox reaction wherein the tooth is oxidized and the bleaching material is reduced. So coming to the first type, that is vital bleaching, which is done in cases of vital teeth. So this is done for the management of white and brown discoloration that results from mild fluorosis or in cases of calcific metamorphosis or pulp canal obliteration. Now, before we carry out the vital bleaching procedure clinically in a patient's mouth, we need to take a detailed case history as well as take into consideration the patient's expectations with respect to the discoloration. 
the most important is the shade, uh, shade selection before we start with the case. So as we all know, the classical shade guide that is available in most of the dental clinics is the Vita shade guide, which is arranged according to the hue from A1 to D4. So this is how the Vita shade guide is arranged in our clinics when we are doing our routine procedures. Whereas whenever we are performing bleaching procedure, we need to rearrange the shade guide according to the value from B1 to C4 as we can see on the screen. So it is of utmost importance that we take the shade according to the value and we rearrange our classic shade guides according to the value. So if for example, I would be uh, showing you one of my cases wherein the shade of the uh, patient when we preoperatively took it, it was A2, which after the vital bleaching procedure uh, uh, took up uh, the shade was that we got after the vital bleaching procedure was A1. So we had a two uh, shade upgradation in that case. If the patient still expects more upgradation in the value, then we can definitely try a cycle depending on the case. So I would uh, like to show my case. Uh, whenever we are doing the vital bleaching procedure, as I said, just a summary of the case, I would like to show you. So this is the preoperative shade, as I said, which was A2. Now, before I take up this, I uh, already said that we need to rearrange the shade guide right, that we have, which is arranged according to the Q. It, that needs to be rearranged according to the value, first of all, so that we know how uh, the shade has upgraded and we can explain it better in a better way to the patient as well. So the preoperative shade with this patient was A2. So the patient expected a sh uh, upgradation at least by two shades. That was what was her expectation. So before we start with the actual bleaching procedure, what is done is a gingival barrier is applied as you, as you all can see in the picture in front of you all. So this gingival barrier is applied to prevent the leaching of the bleaching agent on the gingival tissues. And this uh, gingival barrier is light cured. Followed by which the bleaching gel that we are expecting to use should be manipulated according to the manufacturer's instructions. It could be either in a powder liquid form or it could be in a tube form which can be directly dispensed uh, by your applicator tips onto the tube surface. So this is how we see that this particular agent was uh, supposed to be mixed in the powder liquid ratio with the applicator tip it is mixed and this gel is applied on the tooth surfaces and it is allowed to stay on the tooth surfaces depending on the manufacturer's instructions for 10 to 15 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes. Now the gel can be left on the tooth surface as it is or it can be activated with the help of a light. So, So in this particular case, I have used a diode laser for vital bleaching and the diode laser tip or the bleaching tip was used for activating the bleaching gel. Now, after this bleaching is accomplished, the bleaching gel is washed off with uh, after placing a high back suction in the patient's mouth and a desensitizer is placed on the teeth surfaces because vital bleaching can give rise to post-operative sensitivity. So a 5% sodium fluoride gel can be used as a desensitizer that can be applied to all the teeth surfaces that have been uh, treated with the bleaching gel. So we have a pre-operative photograph with a shade tap in our hand followed by a post-operative photograph with a shade tap in hand. So this is how we got a two shade upgradation in this case of vital bleach. Now coming to the second type of bleaching, which is the non-vital bleaching, it can be done in endodontically treated teeth so this is done in discolored teeth, which are secondary to residual necrotic pulpal remnants in the pulp chamber following root canal treatment or pulpal hemorrhage into dentine following trauma. Now, whenever a non-vital bleaching uh, procedure is done, there are two considerations that we can uh, take in our minds before we treat the case. Now, I would be sharing two of my cases of non-vital bleaching here, wherein one tooth we did the non-vital bleaching procedure followed by a composite restoration. So no crown or prosthetic rehabilitation was done. Whereas a second case wherein the prosthetic rehabilitation was required since the coronal structure was compromised. So this is my first case. Here you can see that the shade of the tooth was C4. So this tooth was discolored because of pulpal uh, damage or intrapulpal hemorrhage. So we did the endodontic treatment of this tooth followed by the 
removal of two to three mm of GP, which is a pickle to the CEJ, so that I have a place for a gingival barrier to be placed in the form of GIC or glass eye nova cement. Now this barrier helps in preventing the bleaching agent from leaching into the dentinal tubules and thus prevent the discoloration. So here we can see that this space is created for placement of the glass inomer cement. So the glass inomer barrier is placed over which the bleaching agent is placed. And with two to three visits of this non-vital bleaching agent application, we can see that there is the shared accreditation from C4 to A1. Now, since this tooth was uh, not requiring any prosthetic rehabilitation, since the crown structure was intact, as we can see preoperatively, the procedure that we carried out here was just the non vital bleaching cycles followed by a composite restoration. So, in this particular case, there was no prosthetic rehabilitation in the form of crown that was done in this patient. Now coming to the second case, now this particular case, uh, when we checked it preoperatively, we can see that there is loss of coronal tooth structure and there is definitely a need for prosthetic rehabilitation. So how did we go about? In this particular case, this is the preoperative radiograph that was taken and there's a periapical infection that can be seen in this X-ray. So the endodontic treatment was carried out. After the endodontic treatment was completed, there was uh, a two to three mm of shearing of, of the gutta pacha for the placement of glass inova cement barrier or the GIC barrier over which the bleaching agent was placed. So the bleaching agent that was used here was uh, opalescence endo, which is nothing but 35% hydrogen peroxide. After this was done, after two or two to three cycles of this non-vital bleaching that was carried out, so we can see that the non-vital bleaching was carried out after which the tooth was prosthetically rehabilitated with a ceramic crown. So in this particular case, if we compare the two cases of non metal bleaching that, was the, that were carried out, in the first case, coronal structure being intact and the aesthetic result was acceptable by the patient, a crown was not required. Whereas in the second case, the patient wanted the rehabilitation in the form of a crown. So a crown was placed as the prosthetic or step in treating this or non-vital tooth or discolored So when we talk about the bleaching techniques, we have an inside-outside bleaching procedure, which is done with 10 to 15% carbamide peroxide gel and a whitening tray. There could be a walking bleach technique, which is accomplished with the help of 35% hydrogen peroxide gel or a 10 to 20% carbamide peroxide gel. There could be an in-office bleaching, which is uh, the light activated non-vital bleaching procedure. Whereas a thermocatalytic bleaching process as well that can be accomplished with 35% nitrogen peroxide gel and lead. So I would be, uh, in my subsequent sessions, I would be talking at length about the bleaching procedures. Here I have just summarized in short how it can be used as one of the treatment modalities for management of discolored teeth. Now coming to uh, the uh, relax rate of uh, these bleaching procedures. So there is a relax of discoloration in non-vital bleaching uh, or in non-vital teeth bleaching, which is relatively common. And it is most important that we explain this to the patient in the first appointment or the first visit itself. Now the reported cases of relapse or recurrence of discoloration are generally 10% after two years and 20 to 25% after five years which uh, needs to be uh, explained to the patient. And if the patient is ready to uh, go forward with the non-vital bleaching, then we can definitely attempt. But in case of the patient is not ready to take up these relapse rates, then what can be opted for is the endodontic treatment followed by a prosthetic rehabilitation in the form of a crown. Now coming to option number four, that is microabrasion. Now what is microabrasion? It is nothing but a procedure where a microscopic layer of enamel is simultaneously eroded and abraded, leaving an intact surface which is amorphous and prismless that appears smooth and lustrous. So this particular procedure removes about 50 to 200 microns of enamel and its repetitive use generally is limited since there is enamel removal. Now this particular procedure can be carried out with 37% phosphoric acid gel and fine grain pumice in equal proportion 
or by using 80% hydrochloric acid and pumice or we can also use a product which is available from Ultrafine that is Opta's uh, op op Opel Luster which contains 6.6% hydrochloric acid slurry with silicon carbide microparticles. There is uh, one more procedure in relation to microabrasion, which is called as air abrasion that can be used. It is nothing but a pseudo-mechanical non-rotary method of cutting the dental heart tissues using the kinetic energy of a stream of desiccated abrasive particles, which are most commonly 27 uh, micron aluminum uh, uh, alumina particles that can be uh, bombarded on the teeth surface at higher velocity. So this air abrasion technique can be useful to remove the ex extrinsic stains that occur on the discolored tooth. So this is an article that was published uh, in the World Journal of Clinical Cases titled Enamel Microabrasion. So you can definitely refer this article for a detailed overview of the clinical and scientific considerations of the microabrasion procedure. Yeah. Or uh, to add on uh, onto the microabrasion, there is a procedure that is termed as macroabrasion or mega abrasion. So this particular procedure is useful for managing idiopathic white enamel opacities and the intrinsic developmental yellow-brown enamel discolorations, which is uh, carried out with the help of a porous diamond instrument at low speeds that is ranging from 400 to 2000 uh, RPM, which allows a safe and well-controlled elimination of the discolored enamel. So this mega abrasion or macro abrasion is also called as the enamel biopsy technique. Now this particular procedure, the rationale behind mega abrasion uh, is that that it recognizes the intact uh, underlying dentine that provides the natural optical effects of the tooth and the simple freehand application of a neutral translucent uh, shade and slightly fluorescent composite can allow the recreation of the tooth's natural morphology and appearance along with its structure. So in option number four, just to summarize, we have spoken about microabrasion, air abrasion and mega abrasion or macro abrasion. Coming to option number five, so we have direct composite tracing VNAS that, all, that can be obtained wherein a thin uh, layer or a direct application of a thin layer of composite is done over the labial surface of the tooth that have been discolored in order to modify its contour and or the shade. Now this particular procedure can be done by masking or simulation. Coming to option number six, so that's an indirect technique. Indirect technique pertains to the uh, inculcation of laboratory procedures by taking impressions and sending it to the laboratory, wherein the fabrication of a prosthesis can be done that can be cemented to mask the discoloration. So indirect composite uh, resin veneers or ceramic veneers have the advantage of precise control of the occlusal contacts, the proximal contacts, as well as the surface morphology. Option number seven is full coverage crowns. So full coverage crowns can be done in discolored teeth, which are heavily restored using or uh, including the use of posts. So the full coverage crowns that can be used. So we have a variety of crowns nowadays that are available, ranging from the opaque metal crowns, ceramic crowns, and the lithium disilicate or translucent crowns. Option number eight, which is the most invasive, so in case when we consider the overall endodontic, periodontal and restorability status of the tooth in question, and we find that restoring the tooth is questionable, we definitely opt for extraction and prosthodontic replacement or rehabilitation in that particular case. Also to summarize all the eight options that we have spoken about, uh, ranging from uh, the least invasive to the most invasive, so option number one was monitor and review. Option number two was scaling and polishing or, or, or air polishing. Option number three was the vital uh, and the non-vital bleaching techniques. As I already mentioned earlier, I would be taking up these techniques at length in my separate session, consecutive sessions. The next is micro abrasion, mega abrasion and air abrasion. Option number five, direct composite resin veneers. Option number six, indirect composite resin veneers or ceramic veneers. Option number seven, full coverage crowns. And option number eight, which is the most invasive, that is extraction and prosthetic replacement. 
So to conclude my presentation, I would like to say that the application of ultra conservative treatment modalities should always precede a more sophisticated treatment plan. Now, from the patient's perspective, if we think conservative treatments are always preferable since they are less expensive and they are more satisfactory. Before resorting to any invasive protocol, we should always make an effort to restore the natural tooth structure and make the treatment better and acceptable for the patient. These are the references for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Joshi for sharing your valuable insights on the multiple modalities of treatment available for the management of discolored teeth. We look forward to further detailed sessions on these treatment procedures. Thank you to all our audience for tuning in today and for being a part of this session. We will be back next week with yet another session of Dent Essential. Until then, Please take care and happy dog flexing. Thank you.